G'day viewers, welcome to another super helpful cool repair video from the Goat Shed located in Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia. Here's an interesting one we thought we'd share with you. But before we go on, today is Friday, July the 14th, 2023. It's approximately 10 degrees Celsius outside, which equates to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've had a couple of cool mornings here of late. Now, we had a high end in here about a month ago, and we mentioned this fault we had, and now we've come up with exactly the same fault on this game to make things interesting. And it's to do with the reset relay. Now the reset relay on this is called the V relay and then you have the VR, R for reset. And the problem we have here is that you start a game and the score rules don't reset. The reason is the V relay doesn't trip. Now electrically it operates off a switch on the S relay and when the S relay pulls in and holds on it spins the score motor and then a switch on motor TC comes into play and at the same time that will increment the total play meter and reset the ball count unit. Now both those aforementioned things are occurring quite okay so it indicates the circuit's working However, the V relay doesn't pull in. Now, this is a problem that was pointed out to us by uh, Tim Meehan. Now, Tim's well known on Pinside, I believe. Uh, I think he calls himself Tim Mee. Um, Tim's also a coach on Mark Gibson's Fun with Pinball, uh, the monthly clinic that's held to help assist people all through around the world with their games and he learned this back in the in the day and what the problem is is that there has the interlock relay has two large plates that it uses to to latch now let's try and see this one here that's this plate here is one plate and then the plate I have in my hand is the other plate however what occurs is that by grinding it down like that and making a smaller surface area here, it gives you less metal to grab onto. Essentially these things develop residual magnetism or re magnetic resistance or whatever you like to call it. Now we've taken it out and modified it, so bearing in mind that was straight across we've ground all those that bit out there and we're going to put that back in the unit and and test it and we're pretty confident it should fix it this consistently wasn't resetting the score rules consistently so let's now put this back in the game and show you that it should work so this is a great tip for these games now these appear on all the baseball games they're the run um, in the run circuit, there's generally three of them, uh, and they're they're used extensively in a lot of these earlier wedgehead games. So let's now put it back in and show you what happens. Okay. Now here we are, we're reassembling it. What you had to do was bend that piece up here that Graham's pointing to now. It sort of like limits the travel the plate makes, and then bend it back down. You do have to leave a bit of clearance between the plate and the arm so you really need to look at that before you pull it apart but it's kind of common sense because the plate can't have restrictions it's just got to have a little bit of movement then all we have to do is hook a spring back onto it Now he didn't, didn't close that gap far enough, so he's just adjusting that. I mean, there's probably a specific measurement if we cared to look into it, but I think a visual check's good enough and a bit of common sense. That's 
smaller pair of duckbill pliers would probably be the better things for that but we lent them to somebody and they didn't return them did they so don't lend your tools out to people it's pretty good okay so what we're going to do now we're just going to sit that relay in there just roughly without shorting anything out and we're going to turn the machine back on in a sec and see what happens okay so now we've got this relay back in let's start again now now this was consistently not resetting the score rail so this modification we've done we're pretty confident that should have fixed it because it didn't appear to be electrical the only other thing it could have been if it was electrical would be a loose or spinning contact pad however as I mentioned earlier the ball count unit was reliably resetting along with the total play meter was incrementing so we sort of ruled that out but you can never be too sure so we oh I forgot to mention also we we did check the um, the coil was okay all right so oh we're on zero credits soon to wonder if we put it in free play let's go beautiful that fixed that um, so there you go there's a, a great little tip for you on those interlock relays now this machine will well continue to troubleshoot this well we just got a couple of um, sockets to put in the match lights there we'll do that and then we'll um, we've got to restart with the braid on the yeah, and we've got to do a little um, a, a bit of braid on the ball count unit so we'll do that and then we'll continue troubleshooting we'll put the play field in and we'll see see what happens on this game so Spanky just reminded me that we've previously done two videos on on a high hand so I guess what we'll do now is we'll just finish this one off because yeah I think people would be a bit it's a bit of an overkill we we may do a short video on the play of every this when it's all set up because it's such a lovely lovely machine and um, take it from there so just remember that useful tip and please remember to subscribe to our channel also give us the big thumbs up for taking the trouble to make these videos for you it's much appreciated and it also the more likes we get the better off it is for our um, our rating and recommendation on YouTube so this has been another goat shed presentation. <laughs>